Bariatric surgery has proven itself to be a very effective procedure for weight loss for the morbidly obese. Dr. Robert Rutledge tells us more. Well, obesity in the United States, most people now recognize, is one of the leading preventable causes of death, and they predict that in the next several years, obesity will actually outstrip smoking as the number one cause of preventable deaths in the United States in, in American citizens. So obesity is a, uh, a really serious problem, and some people classify it as an epidemic. Uh, associated medical illnesses like diabetes, heart disease, stroke, arthritis, gout, sleep apnea, things like that, um, are really creating a terrible toll on Americans. And so the desire is to come up with some kind of treatment. In the past, open surgery with a big incision and several days in the hospital, ICU stays, and fairly high associated complications were available as a treatment. The problems with those types of surgery were the attendant complications and the poor long-term effectiveness. So the old kinds of surgery had relatively high failure rates and relatively high complication rates. Uh, because of this, I began looking into other techniques to try and improve the outcomes of weight loss surgery. And starting in 1997, I started using a laparoscopic form of gastric bypass. It has a few minor modifications. It has a slightly longer and narrower stomach pouch, and it has a longer bypass of small bowel. And that combination has led to excellent results. It leads to a very low rate of complications. It leads to a short hospital stay, a short operation, a rapid return to work, and it's been found to be very effective. That is, over the long term, the weight loss averages about 140 pounds for a 300-pound person. So it's an excellent treatment for a very serious medical illness. The recovery is very short. Uh, we've had people play golf on the second day post-op. Uh, one of my staff had the surgery on a Friday, and she came back to work on Monday. So uh, basically, you can get back to work pretty quickly. There's very minimal pain, and that's one of the big positives for many people, especially people who work for themselves. The short-term risks are very low, which is one of the real attractions. Um, but if you do get a complication after our surgery, the most common things are some nausea, uh, potentially a small amount of bleeding, um, sometimes having to come back in the hospital and get IV fluids. Um, and that happens in less than 5% of people. The long-term risks are pretty well known because this kind of surgery is used for uh, stomach cancer surgery, gunshot wounds, trauma, uh, things like that. And so we know about this kind of surgery for more than 100 years. The long-term risk can be classified in two groups. Basically, iron deficiency anemia uh, is uh, something that can happen, particularly in our young women who are still having their menstrual cycle. And the other risk is getting an ulcer or gastritis, an upset stomach. And both of those are pretty easily treatable and preventable. The average weight overall at the time they have surgery is right at 300 pounds. So some people, for example, are 250, some are 350, uh, some are 400, some are as low as 200, but the average is right at 300 pounds. And the weight loss follows a logarithmic decline. So the majority happens early, then it tends to flatten out and finish up at about a year after surgery. And the average numbers for a 300 pound person are as follows. The average weight loss at one month is 30 pounds, so 10% of their body weight in that first month. Most of that's gonna be water. The average weight loss at three months is about 50 pounds. At six months is 80 pounds, and at one year it's 140 pounds. Making a decision today about obesity surgery is one that's not as easy as, say, deciding to have a hernia repair. We ask our former patients to breach their patient confidentiality and be willing to talk about their experiences. And to have that experience, to see that people are willing to reach out and help one another, creates a community that I am part of, and I can say it's a great privilege. It's a very enjoyable experience to see one person helping another with a problem that they've been through. And so that process builds as part of our steps in trying to educate the patient, prepare them for surgery, and its foundation is upon the idea of trying to tell the person as much as possible about what they may or may not experience, about what the choices are, and then letting them talk to a minimum of 10, but oftentimes dozens and sometimes hundreds of other people that have been through just what they have.